Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update brought to you by KrakenCryptocurrency.com. Hopefully everybody is doing absolutely fantastic as we get this week's trading session rolling off on this lovely, slightly cool and somewhat thunderstormy Monday morning here in the crypto markets. My name is Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at KrakenCryptocurrency.com. If you guys enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode and make that like button pay like it owes you money. All right. We've got a lot to talk about today. Today, we're going to be talking about the proposed new cryptocurrency tax laws that the IRS has now put out. And there is ni a nice silver lining here because there's going to be quite a long time from now until then when centralized exchanges like Coinbase and Kraken are going to be federally required to submit all of the P&L information to the government. So making sure the cryptocurrency traders pay their fair share, and this will clarify things, and this is overall good, good regulation and firm rules will bring in innovation, development, will bring in retail, number go up, okay? But of course, for those out there who just want to get their ill-gotten crypto gains and fly off to the Bahamas, well, you know, you're not just going to be able to like, you know, you know what I'm saying? So, but good news, because it's going to be a couple of years. We're going to go over all that as well. We're also going to be talking about the SEC's latest enforcement action, this time ruling that NFTs are securities eh, sometimes, right? So we're going to break all that down. Uh, big news for the NFT traders out there. We're going to be going over the Bitcoin chart, uh, identifying exactly what trade setups I'm looking at this week and what the community members have brought to me. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the altcoin market, and we're also going to be looking at two DeFi protocols that have come across my radar. Going to break them down, talk about them, and see what you guys think. All right. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, hot stock tips, or sarcastic remarks, please drop them in the chat or in the comment section if you're watching this after the show. And let's get going. All right, starting off today, of course, with our copy trading update. Shout out to all those individuals out there who are copy trading me. Uh, we are currently in some long positions. We're currently up about $100 on the day. Uh, you know, basically brief update over the weekend. We, we had long positions, and then I made the infamous mistake of trading over the weekend. Didn't really lose any money. Uh, but we were, you know, we basically ended up break even because we had the long positions open that we had held basically for Thursday and Friday. Uh, and then I believe it was Saturday evening. I went and finagled with them a little bit. I was a little worried about a sharp market downturn. I wasn't looking for a breakdown of price. You guys know that my theory is not that price is breaking down right now. Quite the opposite. Uh, but I was concerned that my longs were in danger. So I ended up hedging a split position, ended up closing those long positions out. And then we did get that sharp move down. Uh, it wasn't like super dramatic, but we can see that we did end up getting that sharp move down, but then just alley-oop right back up. So long story short, I, I should have just held the long positions and we wouldn't have kind of had that break-even trade. But anyways, we're long now. It's all good. Uh, all, all is well. Uh, if we go to 
my copy trade, show you guys my statistics so far. Uh, where we're at. So 78.57% uh, win rate for the last seven days, 72.22% for the last three weeks, 33 total trades, 28 one, five lost. Uh, let's see here. We've got uh, seven day PL of $72. And how much have. Okay. Yeah, that's all pretty decent. And yeah, you guys can, can see all that there. This is just the hedge that we took. That is going to be equaled out by the longs that we took. And you guys can see these two small losses on those longs that we had. And we should have just held those anyways. But anyways, other than that, overall, pretty good. Copy trading is going well. And I do want to say, of course, the link is down in the description if you want to copy trade me. And of course, we did just give, do a big giveaway. Sorry, I got to announce that the stream is happening to everybody in the Discord. Uh, if you guys go to our Discord, you will see in our announcements channel, Every single week, we are giving away $100 to three individuals who sign up to copy trade me. I've talked about this before, and we just gave away our first giveaway this morning. It happens every Monday. So congratulations to these three lucky winners with the user IDs here that you can see. You guys can go see the announcement in the Discord. Uh, so anyways, depositing 5229, 9170, and 10,000. Uh, and you can see here that the 100 USDT has been deposited successfully into their account. So congratulations to those three lucky winners. Thank you guys for having faith and believing in me and copy trading me, earning while I earn, losing while I lose, of course. And if you guys want to get signed up, if you guys want to qualify for this, all you have to do is sign up to copy trade me and deposit into your account. And every week we will take the top three depositors who signed up the fault the previous week and we will reward them on Monday. So you guys have from now until Sunday to get in the to get in the drawing for not even a drawing to, to register and qualify to win for next Monday's giveaway. So, all right, moving right along. Let's get into, and let's get back here. So I'll have that for future reference. Let's get into Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is exciting. We've got some stuff happening. All right, on the daily time frame, of course, Bitcoin is simply oversold. There's so much we could talk about right now. Uh, as the week kicks off, we saw that, of course, the uh, expansion to the downside that we experienced last week. We can see here on the weekly time frame there was low volatility crush. Uh, and, and you guys know that I'm, I'm a big believer in volatility. I've really come around on volatility. Uh, but um, why is it? Can you guys hear the? That's very interesting. Just one second. Yeah, that's so weird. But I have the. That's just so weird. I'm going to turn the music off for now. Uh, anyways, apologies. I didn't realize that there was music there, but I'm actually going to keep it on. But maybe just bring it down just a little bit. Let me know if that if the music is okay, guys. Um, so we had some big volatility crush on the weekly time frame that led to the expansion. So low volatility precedes high volatility. If you crunch price into a tighter and tighter range, it requires resolution of that range. It will break out to one extent. There can be whipsaw, but in general, a good strategy is to identify markets or assets that are in periods of low volatility and simply wait and watch and trade in the direction of the breakout. Generally, that is a profitable strategy carried over a large number of trades. Uh, we do see here on the weekly time frame that as far as the Bollinger Bands are concerned, it's really not that crazy. We have simply gone from the upper boundary of the Bollinger Bands to the lower boundary of the Bollinger Bands. We do, of course, have a big gaping hole underneath us that we will revisit. We will be going back to 18 to 20,000. That is my firm conviction based on the four-year cycle thesis. You've heard me talk about this over and over and over again. Uh, but I don't necessarily think that we're going there right now. That is not my conviction. I do believe that we're going to see ranging maybe for a couple of months. I will be surprised if we do break down immediately. Now, what do we do if we do break down immediately? We need to get back into our shorts. All right. We need to get back into our shorts. As you guys know, we did hedge up here near the highs. We recently closed out those shorts following this big destruction candle of about 10%. And now we're playing to the long side. All right. Very simple. Uh, we're just ex uh, expecting that price will continue to range. We are going to take longs. We will reload our shorts up here. And then we will be prepared if that is the big kahuna that takes us down to 18 to 20,000, which again, I don't think that's going to happen quickly. I think we've got six months, if not, you know, a little bit longer to see all of this play out, to see consolidation in this range, to maybe see that higher time frame volatility crush, and then to finally get that resolution down to 18 to 20,000, which will be the last opportunity to buy crypto at a discount before we enter the bull market of 24, 25. 
That's it. That's the four-year cycle thesis. That is what we're trading on. That is what we're planning on. I've said it over and over again. That's all I'll say about that. Uh, so not too much here on the weekly time frame. Not oversold, not overbought, just continuing to trade within this range. And since we are near the lower edge of that range and support, what do we do at support? We long. Pretty simple. Daily time frame is actually giving us the technical justifications for these decisions because on the daily time frame, we deviated outside the lower boundary of the Bollinger Bands. That is an oversold condition and a trigger. We traded back into the Bollinger Bands. That is a condition and a trigger. We got an ISIS spot. This is a modified version of Minx. Uh, buy signal right here. Uh, and we can see that volatility is also extremely crushed. We're going to see that more so on the four hour time frame. You're going to see just how crushed volatility is. Uh, but as it stands right now, sideways consolidation. Uh, following a big move into the downside, generally we're going to see a pump back up. Even if we are extremely bearish here and we are going to continue back down, we at least do a scam pump uh, to snatch out late shorters down here. All right. We punish late shorters. We pump back up. We get longs trapped and then we crush down. All right. Daily time frame, you can see we're also extremely oversold getting those buy signals or not necessarily buy signals, but like pay attention. Prices oversold and we might pump signals uh, here on the VIX fix and the, C and the, and the Laguerre PPO. So. Uh, pretty powerful oversold conditions and i wouldn't fault anybody even myself uh, for scooping up longs we do have significant demand and absorption here around the twenty six thousand dollar mark over the weekend and pretty much for the last four days price just continually pushed 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 and we were unable to make any negative progress and here we are moving up on this glorious Monday. Going down to the four hour, you can see just how tightly volatility is getting compressed here, tightening and tightening and tightening. Uh, and we are getting some expansion to the upside here. Of course, we did get uh, scammed out the last time we had this expansion, but I don't. I just don't think it was enough uh, consolidation. I don't think it was enough consolidation. So of course we scam up, trap some longs, push back down. And now here is one thing to consider. We haven't seen a, a brutal shakeout of these longs yet. As you can see, we haven't dived back down below. I don't necessarily believe that we have to, because we of course have this wick to the downside, big absorption, wick to the downside, big absorption. If we are going to push up here, I mean, a logical and reasonable way to consider this is that if we do kind of scam out again, it would ideally be a higher low. We can, of course, put in a, um, wow, the term is escaping my memory banks, uh, a sweep. We could, of course, put in a sweep. We could, of course, put in a sweep and force all of the longs into max pain down here around 25. That is a possibility. Um, but if we come down here and, 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 and go at or below this level, then we're in momentum shorting territory. And that's just not really what we're looking at right now. So we're going to see how this plays out. Uh, those who are a little bit more cautious can, of course, wait for a confirmed breakout here. Wait to see a four hour or an hourly close above this level of resistance. Um, I literally wouldn't be waiting all the way up here. That's really not the way to do breakout trades. If you're waiting until price goes above the absolute resistance on like the one hour or four hour, you, the problem with that is, is that while that makes sense, Breakout traders are typically looking for confirmation of a breakout on like the 15 minute time frame, maybe the hourly time frame, but typically the 15 minute time frame or, or something like that. Uh, and the reason why is because that allows you to actually get in at the moment of the break. If you wait for the hourly or the four hour to close, I mean, the move, if it's a real breakout, then a big majority of that movement's going to happen by the time you get in and you might actually be getting in close to the top, unfortunately. So, um, so yeah, I don't really recommend, or particularly in this situation, being so lackadaisical as waiting for the hourly or the four hour. Again, typically breakout traders are going to be focusing on a more lower time frame uh, in crypto. So that's what we're looking at right now. Not, I mean, not a huge amount of volume or momentum right now. So it's absolutely fine too to just say, you know what? I don't trade ranges. I, I don't like ranges. I don't want to get whipsawed. I'm not taking any positions. That's completely fine. Uh, let's see here. Uh, on the hourly. Now we will switch over. We'll get out of the reversal strategy setup. And now we're going to get into our intraday setup. So we can kind of see with a little bit more clarity here. Um, so I want to go to the 15 minute chart and, and basically show you what has occurred uh, over this weekend. Just give it a sec for the CVD chart to update. So as we can see here, uh, bears have basically been in complete control of price action or at least order flow uh, for the majority of the weekend, right? We can just see all. So when you see that the um, when you see the CVD being purple, that is indicating that through this area of the market, there was this amount more more aggressive sells than buys. This amount more aggressive sells than buys. This amount more aggressive. So 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 on and so on. Now 
as you can see here, and this is kind of why I'm, I'm a little bullish in this range and why I am long, we can see that although bears were in complete control, selling, 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 they were completely unable to make any forward progress to the downside. Again, extremely strong support here around the $26,000 range with a few deviations, of course, to grab liquidity and punish longs. Uh, but now we actually have this really nice high volume, massive increase of open interest. You can see this large increase of open interest here. Uh, of course, we have a decline in open interest on the actual big candle pumps right here. That is, of course, anybody who is short getting their positions closed out or liquidated. Uh, and now nice consolidation. Look at this rise, consistent rise in open interest right here. And now we do see CVD indicating that buyers are in control of the market again. Nothing massively significant here. Only 315 more Bitcoin sold a bot than sold right now within the last uh about hour but the bulls are in control of the market currently we do have open interest rising which is confluence and confirming the bullish rise uh, and this all looks pretty good to me i like this i like this i like this quite a bit so that's what we've got right now big picture summary of course we are planning sometime within the next six months to see price uh, bearishly trade all the way back down. Excuse me, let me get rid of this. Bearishly trade back down all the way to eighteen to twenty thousand dollars, which is going to be our buy the bottom dip opportunity. Uh, I do not believe we will be going any lower than the previous low established for the bear market capitulation low, which is roughly sixteen thousand. So I think we can just take that off of our minds. We are targeting eighteen to twenty thousand. Uh, it might take us a while to get there. If we happen to start heading there immediately, uh, we're going to have to rethink some things, but we are going to be looking for uh, what we want to do is I is get back into head shorts or momentum short the breakdown. This is very tricky. It's going to be tricky to pull that off successfully and to hold those positions uh, because we might get whipsaw. But I will let you guys know as soon as I make a move with regards to that. Now, uh, because I don't anticipate us going there immediately i anticipate us playing in this range between 30 and 25 thousand uh, and that means we're probably moving back up we have all the daily technical indications to identify that we have a high probability trade setup right here and that is why i am long and on the 15 minute time frame as of right now we are actually getting breakout confirmation so we'll see uh we'll see how this we'll see how this plays out we'll see if we continue to move to the upside i certainly hope that we do Okay, that's Bitcoin. The altcoin market is, of course, waking up too. Altcoin market's been consolidating here for a while. Uh, so we can go take a look at Ethereum. We can see that same kind of just big movement to the downside, sideways consolidation, big wicks to the downside, but not able to make any forward progress. Higher low, higher low, higher low. Same with Cardano. Cardano looks very juicy right now. Uh, and of course, the premium members will know the update that I just posted about Cardano. So if you guys aren't in the premium group, definitely check that out. Uh, but Cardano is looking juicy here as well. Nice double bottom on the daily time frame here. Uh, you know, spread across a couple of months here. Uh, sideways consolidation. So nice little symmetrical pattern here. And now pushing to the upside. Uh, Doge looks very similar. All of our majors look very similar. Doge, of course, not pushing up with as much momentum as Cardano. Oh, sorry, I've got to do something here on Cardano. Boom. Uh, and Poke Polkadot as well. Polkadot looking the most juicy right here. Same kind of double pat, double bottom over a couple of months and now pushing up and breaking over that resistance on the daily time frame. I can see Polkadot, Ada, Do Doge, all of these kind of majors uh, really pushing up and testing resistance over the next few days, if not weeks. Same with Chainlink. We did establish a higher low. Chainlink, of course, uh, in this very long range period of consolidation with extreme support at $5.50. Only one deviation, and that just happened a while ago. And while some might look at this and say, well, that means the support is broken, uh, this is a sweep. Go study Wyckoff terminology. You're going to see this as a, a sweep or a spring, uh, as Wyckoff would call it, uh, which is a accumulation pattern that we see for many different assets. Uh, Uniswap, not something that I really like to trade. I mean, I made a bunch of money off of Uniswap because I got the airdrop and then I held it and then I sold it and all of that stuff. And, you know, I've only traded Uniswap a few times, honestly, since then, but it's a popular coin. I do like to look at it. Similar to Link here, of course, uh, not as much as a compressed or tight range. Therefore, I'm not really looking for much out of Uniswap relative to what we're, what I could expect us to see at a chain link. Uh, BNB, Okay, BNB, very interesting chart here on the daily time frame because, of course, we have generational support here uh, going back to 2021, roughly at the $200 mark. All right, so any, so I mean, it's just a no brainer to me to bid this. You know what I'm saying? Um, of course, the speculators out there might say that this might not be the time to bid on BNB because of all the hot water surrounding Binance. Binance is in a lot of kerfuffle right now. And if you want to bet against Binance, then you would probably short BNB here. I can't bring myself to do that. I can't bring myself to short 
that support. I just, I'm physically incapable of doing it. I, I can't do it. Um, we are at support. Uh, I think smart money would bid here, right? Of course, we do have like lower highs, lower highs, blah, 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 blah. But I mean, come on. Now, similar with Bitcoin here. Like if we do see a big breakdown here, I mean, then, I mean, geez. I mean, the, the, the scary thing about BNB or the juicy thing is like, look at this. So, so BNB obviously like climbed from zero to, to fair market price here for a while and then consolidated in this expanding range for almost two years. And then just like within the period of a couple of weeks, ascended to new highs that it has never come down from. It has never come down from. So the problem with this is, if we do break down and lose support here for BNB, I mean, there's not, this is all, this is all completely suspect because there's nobody here to defend price. There's nobody, like this was all just breakout trades and, and momentum. And then everybody just held the price up here and probably a little bit of price manipulation, like you know, who's, who can blame them. But I think if we break down, I mean, BNB is probably gonna just bullet down over the course of about three or four months. I mean, and that's that's really scary to think about. I mean, that's really, that's like, I mean, that's huge from 200 to potentially $50. So that is a potential huge trade on the horizon. And that's a huge trade on the horizon. Um, I do see Alex saying that there's a lot of liquidity at 170 for BNB. And I'll say I certainly hope so for Binance's sake, for Binance Smart Chain's sake. Uh, XRP, of course, uh, we've come around a little bit on XRP, as you guys know. Uh, XRP, of course, same thing. We had this kind of nice consolidation range, and then we had the announcement of their pseudo victory over the SEC, which is not really a victory so far. Uh, and then we had this nice breakout. Of course, XRP was not immune to its own sell-off following such a massive move to the upside. I think, what was this, like 30%, 73% in one single day? Uh, but we have come all the way back down to the previous range we were trading in. Big wick to the downside into my support level here, my support zone right here, and then jumping right back up. I don't have any long long-term ideas for XRP here. It is so volatile. It is so dependent on exactly what happens with the SEC. Uh, I think the long-term XRP will probably do okay. It will be buoyed by the bull market as well, especially as it is probably going to be one of the most common stops for those newer to cryptocurrency to start branching out from Bitcoin. Uh, and the interesting thing is too, like that used to be my philosophy, like what coin, like people are going to buy Bitcoin. That was just my assumption. And then they're going to maybe branch out into the other safer coins first and then into DeFi. But nowadays, people are just not even starting off with Bitcoin. They're starting off with XRP. They're starting off with Cardano. It's, you know, it's crazy. So, so who knows? I don't have any real ideas about where XRP's token is going in, in the short term. Solana, you know, Solana is interesting. Obviously, I, I, I hate it. I don't like Solana. Um, but we do have a higher high here, or excuse me, a higher low, followed by a potential other higher low. So we do have somewhat of an upwards trend here on Solana. Uh, we haven't come down and tested this. You guys know I'm not huge on diagonal trend lines. Not really my thing unless we have some kind of triangle. Uh, and I think we really kind of have to stretch the imagination to make something out of this. But, you know, here's a pattern for you, right? Uh, we do have, of course, the resistance here at about 2543. So if we are able to push up, we had a deviation above that, which I'm usually suspicious of. But if we are able to push back up here and get back above 2543, then perhaps we can visit up here near to 45 and get back into this range, at least, which would be forward progress. Uh, key levels to watch here, of course, on Solana are going to be coming down here to test this diagonal trend line. So somewhere around 1735, which is almost a so like a like, what is that? That's a pretty that's a pretty big cut from where we're currently at. About a 12% to the downside. That's really nothing. Okay, nothing to sneeze at. So 12% down to potentially support and maybe 22 to 25% to the upside for resistance. So we are in the middle right now. You guys know that I don't believe in diddling in the middle. I think that gets traders into a lot of trouble. So just wait until we're at some important level or until we have some kind of interesting information about Solana. I don't really have anything to say about it. And last altcoin we're going to look at, last major we're going to look at today is going to be Matic, uh, Matic, similar to the other majors that we looked at here. Again, double bottom down here at support, pushing up. I do like Matic here. It looks good. I like it for the same reasons I like DOT. I like it for the same reasons I like Cardano. So uh, again, double bottom at support. Altcoin market seems to be recovering a little bit. Bitcoin's moving to the upside. So I think that, you know, probably long is the likely direction to trade in the short term for the uh, for, for the, at least the first half of, of this week's trading session. Okay. Um.
All right, let's get into today's crypto news. Is this? Yeah, this this setup seems fine. This is okay. Um, we are going to be starting off with this, okay? Uh, and let me just just give me a second here. Let me actually no, we're going to be going. This is what we're going to be. Yeah. Uh, so this is coming from Roll Call. I just happened to grab an article on it, but this is trending all over. And what we have here, sorry, now I'm going to turn the music off. What we have here is we have a new proposal. This isn't really new, but we this is now an update. This is a significant update uh, from the IRS and the Treasury Department on their delayed crypto tax reporting rule. So let's let's break this all down. Give me one second here, guys. Oh, okay. Sorry, I actually don't have my summary over here, so I'll just have to use my notes. Uh, you know, like in the same guise as well, recently, we're going to have inflation data coming out on Thursday, and we're going to have a new jobs report coming out on Friday. And just this last week, I think a lot of traders missed this, but in Jackson Hole, Jerome Powell did warn investors uh, that he was considering continuing to raise rates later on in the year. Of course, the market has so far not cared uh, because both the but traditional markets are moving up, crypto is moving up. So uh, investors remain unafraid or unfazed from Jerome Powell's indications that he might be raising rates. And we're just going to have to wait and see what he actually says when we see the data this Thursday and Friday. So th this week might be boring. I'd like to see upside this week as investors kind of push push the boots to Jerome Powell. And then we're going to see what his decisions are uh, toward the end of this week. And then we'll really see where the market's heading moving into next week. Now, uh, as a result of this, though, I do want to point out, of course, for those who are also traditional market uh, minded, bond yields are at a 10 year high right now, like absolute all time high. And of course, historically, this is bad for stocks. And if it's bad for stocks, historically, this is bad for crypto. But we shall see. Again, I think we're going to have a relatively low week with an upside bent. Uh, and then we'll really get some resolution and decision making coming Thursday or Friday or maybe moving into next week. Um, all right. By the way, the word of the day today is liminal. Liminal means barely perceptible or worthy of being responded to. So use that in your daily conversations and let me know in the comment section if you knew that word or not. Okay, uh, so the Treasury IRS roll out long delayed crypto tax reporting rules. Uh, but uh, you know the key part here that I think that I want traders to take away from is this is gonna take a long time to finalize, all right? So the Biden administration on Friday proposed regulations to implement a key revenue raiser. I just love, don't you love that the government's like, how can we make more money always? How can we make more money? How can we take more money away uh, from, from our citizens? And this, uh, this is, of course, a, a holdover from the 2021 infrastructure law. We were talking about this uh, a, a, a long time ago. We were talking about this a long time ago, but now we finally have some action on it from the Biden administration. Uh, and this, of course, law would require additional reporting of crypto transactions to the IRS. All right. Now, initially, when they passed this 2021 infrastructure law, they required that the Treasury and the IRS have the rules for this law finalized by the end of this year, 2023, uh, so that they could start collecting revenue as soon as 2024. Uh, 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 greedy, 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 greedy. But since there's been such a delay, the initial proposal will not be published until this coming Tuesday which is going to trigger a two-month public comment period, followed by a hearing on November 7th, 2023. So this means it is going to be, I don't care what this says, it is going to be impossible for the administration to meet the year-end deadline for finalizing the new regulation. It's just not, it's not going to happen. So there is not going to be any additional legal requirements for cryptocurrency traders to report to the IRS as of the end of 2023, which means that whatever, again, I'm just full disclaimer here. I pay my crypto taxes. I pay my accountant very well. I recommend that you do the same. Okay. If you're going to be seriously trading cryptocurrency uh, or investing in cryptocurrency, you just, just, just avoid the trouble. You do not want to as much of as much as I absolutely hate taxes. I believe taxes are stealing. I believe taxes are theft. You got to pay them. All right. Like you can, like I learned this very early on. You can have you can have the best philosophical argument in the world. You can be right. And then nobody cares. Nobody cares. And your life is going, and you're going to suffer as a result of focusing on being right rather than on being smart. 
Okay. Being correct about something does not mean you're going to get the outcome that you want. You need to think strategically. You need to think like a chess master about all the moves in your life and the decisions that you're going to make. So refusing to pay taxes or trying to hide your gains and not pay taxes, which is the same thing. Uh, while that might seem like, yeah, I'm sticking it to the man. Let me tell you, buddy, they will stick it to you and you will not like it. They do not care if you try to stick it to them. They do not even notice you are a fly. Uh, but they will squash you like a fly. So I recommend paying your crypto taxes. Find more constructive and actually effective methodologies to fight back against the government than getting yourself locked in prison, getting all your assets seized, getting your bank accounts frozen. Just, just don't do it. It's not stupid. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that whatever your crypto tax regime is, assuming it's good or, or bad, whatever, um, nothing really needs to change this year because we're not going to have this, this legislature. We're not going to have this, this law finalized. It's just not going to happen. Um, and I would also, of course, highly advocate for individuals to use the democratic system. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, kind of entertain any like nonsense about like how, you know, democracy is completely broken. Like we are able to change things. Like most people are just too lazy to get up off the couch. And there's reasons for that, right? You know, um, I could talk a long time about uh, um, the the public choice democratic system because there's opportunity cost just to become educated about an, a topic. And that's why so many people, so few people take advantage of our uh, public discourse areas. But, uh, but there is a two month public comment period. And I highly recommend that people uh, let their voices be heard or else, you know, whatever, you're just completely useless. So, um, what is this proposal? Okay, so what's going to happen? Okay, this is so cryptocurrency brokers think exchanges, Coinbase, Kraken, they're going to be required to deliver more information to the IRS. And this is likely not going to happen uh, until 2026. So forms are going to be required for when you file your taxes in April of 2026, uh, which would be covering the 2025 financial year. This basically means that 2024 is wide open, right? Uh, not that I, again, am recommending that people don't pay their taxes, but for those of you who are not, you potentially have 2024 to get away with whatever you're doing. So I think this is fun. This is exciting. We knew regulation was coming for a while and now we have a deadline. So the pressure is on the pressure is on. If you're trying to become a DeFi billionaire and walk away from the markets to the Cayman islands and just say, screw the government, you've got a year and a half to do it. You got a year and a half to do it. All right. Because 2025, you're going to report that, all right? Okay, so uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now, of course, uh, quote here from Representative Patrick T. McHenry, who has been quite positive. Uh, he's on the Financial Services Board. He said that the Biden administration must end its efforts to kill the digital asset ecosystem in the U.S. and work with Congress to find and to deliver clear rules of the road for this industry. All right. Uh, he, of course, does have a bipartisan bill. Uh, this is a 282 page proposal. You can go read it or what I recommend have chat GPT summarize it for you, which is what I did. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. And I, I do like this blockchain association CEO, Kristen Smith said it is critical to ensure the participants transacting with digital assets, pay their taxes. However, it's important to remember that the crypto ecosystem is very different from that of traditional assets. So the rules must be tailored accordingly and not capture ecosystem participants that don't have a pathway to compliance. All right. Okay. Uh, estimated to increase government revenue by $28 billion. All right. But uh, yeah, these things happen. So let me know what you guys think about that. Again, I think this is good for the industry. Regulation is good. We knew what was coming and it's nice to have a deadline on it and know that, hey, we got to make our money by 2025 or we're out, right? So, okay. Next up. Next up. Okay. Uh, this is really what's trending today. I want to thank uh, Alex, of course. Yeah, Hester Pierce, I see you, girl. I want to thank Alex for bringing this across my radar. There we go. Okay, so the SEC has taken action on an NFT project and ruled essentially uh, that... Okay, so let me just yeah, start from the beginning. So the, the Security and Exchange Commission took its first, en first enforcement action against an NFT sale. Uh, the The... Uh, organization or cryptocurrency project in question is called impact theory they sold nfts worth almost 30 million dollars so the total sales of all their nfts to customers was about 30 million dollars and the sec has charged the company with offering unregistered securities however 
uh, they have settled. The settlement did not include any fraud charges. So they weren't accusing them of selling something fraudulent. Uh, the NFTs were delivered. The NFTs were sold, were bought consensually by the clients. Uh, but this is going to be really impactful moving forward. Of course, we knew that the SEC was taking massive action against a lot of these DeFi companies uh, who sold their own tokens. And now they are entering into the NFT world. And I see this, I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of NFT enforcement actions because on obviously we could say that many, many, many cryptocurrency sales are just flash in the pan cash grabs in the NFT market more significantly. So I'd say probably 90 to 95% of all NFTs sold were just cash grabs. Uh, and we're not even talking about the celebrity ones, but uh, I digress. Um, okay, so this is their first enforcement action related to an NFT sale uh, on August 28, 2023 today. Impact Theory sold NFTs worth nearly $30 million. And what they allege is that under the guise of selling these tokens, Impact Theory promised that the NFTs would increase in value. But of course, they weren't company shares or dividends. So they did get charged for offering unregistered securities, but no fraud charges were included in the settlement. And the SEC argues that selling NFTs with promises of brand growth should not be treated differently from selling tangible items like watches or paintings. Um, Impact Theory had previously offered repurchase programs for the NFTs, paying out $7.7 .7 million in Ether. And the settlement includes conditions related to the destruction of certain NFTs and the removal of royalties from the underlying smart contracts. Okay, so so very interesting. We do have our first enforcement action again from the from the SEC against our first NFT project. And I just see this really ramping up moving forward. I see the next six months, especially, probably seeing a lot of NFT projects on the chopping block. Uh, and personally, I think that's great, right? Like obviously NFTs were fun and exciting for those who got in, but I don't think it's necessarily good the industry long-term, okay? All right, so that's the news for today. Let me know what you guys think in the chat or in the comments down below if you're watching this later. I always love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And now I want to get into um, some DeFi stuff. I want to get into some DeFi stuff. So I'm going to show you two DeFi projects that have come across my radar. I have taken a position in one. I have not taken a position in the other. And of course, before we begin, huge disclaimer, we are talking about DeFi tokens here. We are talking about low cap tokens here, guys. I am not responsible for your investment decisions. You guys need to make sure that you are not trading or investing money that you cannot afford to lose if you're dealing with low cap coins. All right, but we're going to talk about it. I'm going to break it down and I'm going to explain the use case for both of these tokens. The first token uh, is going to be guys and let's go to their website all right so this is geyser the, the name of the project is geyser uh their token is guys all right so uh geyser.org is their link and i will put this in the uh description of the video after i publish after the recording is done after the live stream is done uh you guys can get on their telegram uh, and it is current that the token is available for purchase on Uniswap. So you can go grab it on Uniswap. Here's the contract token. Uh, we can go in here and look at holders. Contract is verified by Etherscan. Okay. Uh, we can see that the exchanges hold about 30% uh, of the contract. Uh, and beyond that, the next top holder has only 1.7%. Now that's pretty high for, for a low cap. Uh, but what we don't see here is that we have massive whales uh, holding the, ma the the majority of the token. So this is good. Uh, pretty well decentralized. Their telegram is popping. I've been in a telegram this morning. Uh, current market capitalization of 4.7 mil. Actually, that's, that's, uh, that's FDV. Let's actually go to deck screener. Here we go. We're going to be talking about this one next. Let's actually go look at guys. Here we go. All right. 
Uh, so current market capitalization of 4.8 million, which is also the FDV as well, about $352,000 of liquidity. As you guys can see here, uh, guys, is a new token. We had a nice push to the upside here. Nice pullback. I do like what I'm seeing here. If we go down to the four hour time frame, we can see a little bit of consolidation and nice demand swooping in here. So what is guys? Guys is a decentralized exchange, uh, but it's more of a swap. So it's definitely not like Uniswap. It's not like anything. It's more like Shapeshift. All right. And what guys is big selling point is, is privacy and security. All right. So there's no KYC. There's no AML. They are partnered with exchanges. I'll let you guys look into all this if you want to do your own research. But essentially, it's very simple. Uh, you send, uh, they've got a multitude of, of coins that you can trade, about 200 different cryptocurrencies that you can swap. Uh, so again, just very, very simple interface. You just come in here, whatever you want to swap, and you can even put a receiving address. If it's your address, that's fine. You can also use this to send tokens completely privately to somebody else. So I do like that. Uh, of course, I'm a big privacy advocate. So I am advocating for projects that incorporate privacy and security uh, by not leaking IP addresses, all of these things, by not requiring you to KYC, by not requiring you to put your personal information out there. I think this is the future. Anonymous, distributed, decentralized, private, now, I have no predictions about how well guys will do. I just like the current chart. I like where we're at. I like the narrative. I like the telegram. I like that people have been bidding this up right now. Uh, I will say, so you can purchase this. It is only available on Uniswap. I took a 1% of equity position. So I want to explain this very, very closely uh, so that you guys don't come to me later and you're like, oh my God, you didn't set a stop loss. No, there's no stop loss. I bought some guys. I'm looking for price to potentially double from here or at least 70%. 70% is my first take profit area. Uh, and it either does or it doesn't, right? I take 1% risk on this trade. I don't set a stop loss on my DeFi plays, okay? There's just no purpose on it. It's either going to pump or it's not. So that's it. I've posted the signal, of course, to the premium trading group this morning. You guys can see that there are some buys coming in here. You can make the argument that the current market structure is bearish or bullish. I will post all the links for guys down below, not sponsored. They didn't contact me. I don't know them. I don't make any money if you go to guys and buy it. I don't care. Uh, but I do like the chart and I do like the narrative. So geyser.org, the, uh, the platform is working. You do get revenue sharing by holding the token. There is a 5% buy and sale tax on the token as well, but you will get revenue sharing for holding the token off of uh, exchange fees. And what's nice about it too, is that the platform, uh, you have to stake the token for a week on the platform. So if you buy the guy's token, you go to the guy's platform, you stake the token, and you have to stake it for a whole week. And if you do that, you get your rewards paid out in Ethereum. You don't get them paid out in guys token. It's not some inflationary Ponzi nomic. You get paid out in ETH, right? So real yield, hashtag real yield. All right. And uh, that is exactly uh, what I've done as well. So Geyser, the token is guys. Uh, I will link all the information down in the description later on. And let me know what you guys think about the chart or about the project. Uh, and of course, you can find all the information right here as well if you just search for it on CoinGecko. Oh, I dropped my pen. All right. Next token we're going to look at is going to be ba -da -da -ba -ba, Dex Screener. We're going to look at BookieBot. BookieBot. Oh, by the way, uh, guys, is only available on ERC20. It's Ethereum. All right. So you're going to be paying a high gas fee. BookieBot. All right. Uh, relatively new token. Of course, we are pamping. All right, BookieBot is pamping. This is just playing into the current narrative of Telegram bots doing absolutely insane. Uh, again, we we could go on and talk about like Unibot being obviously the other one, but now that with with the uh, with the uh, with the success of uh, all the Telegram bots, I mean, it just is the current narrative. All right, so we're not going to get into all this complicated technical analysis or fundamentals. Like, we're, we're not. This is crypto. We're playing DeFi tokens. Okay, uh, we're just looking to play the current narrative and ride the current narrative until it's exhausted. I don't really see the Telegram narrative being exhausted. In fact, it just continues to grow and blow up. Uh, BookieBot specifically is focusing on sports betting. All right, so let me actually pull open there. Ba -na 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 -na. Their Twitter. Ba -na 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 -na. Here is Geyser's Twitter and Team Bookie Bot. 
at Team Bookiebot is their official Twitter. Sports betting on Telegram, easily bet to your heart's content. We'll go take a look at their at their website. Pretty simple, of course, it's all just a Telegram bot right here. So you can go through all the docs. Uh, they do have revenue sharing. So if you hold the token, you will get a portion of revenue sharing. And I will say that that is a portion of the narrative that I've seen projects do better on, right? So uh, obviously Unibot was just great for, for being Unibot. And that was kind of the, the first big one. But all the subsequent bots that have come out, uh, I've noticed that the ones that do revenue sharing do perform better in price, okay? So the revenue sharing is already uh, enabled and working. So if you do hold the bookie bet token, the BB token, uh, you will get a portion of the revenue collected by the by the application the the bot that is automatically placing your trades of course there is a fee to 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 take advantage of this uh but yes so you can do your sports betting on bookie bot now uh i do not uh, like i said i have taken a position in one of these the token i've taken a position in is guys as the premium members know i have not yet taken a position in bookie bot and oh here's where i had all this information Oh yeah, sorry. I could. We're gonna go back to guys here in just a little bit, so I'll give you some more information about guys. But we will. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, here's the chart on BookieBot. I'll tell you why I haven't taken a position. Uh, I do want to see a bit of a pullback on BookieBot. I'd like to see us come back to this consolidation area around two dollars. So unfortunately, that means that if this just does run, myself being a little bit more conservative because I've already taken a couple of other trades today, uh, I'm going to miss out on this one. But again, we are pamping. You're going to have to use your own discretion with this one. And again, I want to advise you guys: this, these are DeFi tokens, okay? Uh, you know, I feel very confident about the direction of Bitcoin's price, uh, but here we're playing narratives and there is high risk, extremely high risk when playing DeFi tokens, high reward, but high risk. So do not trade with any money you cannot afford to lose. Uh, what I recommend for you guys to do, if you want a simple way to do it, uh, take a portion of your account. And if you want to do these plays, so let's say you have a thousand dollar account, let's take 10% of that. So you got a hundred bucks that you're going to set aside. And of that hundred bucks, you can do anywhere from whatever number you feel comfortable, right? You can even do 1%, right? So you put a dollar on it, right? But, you know, obviously that's not going to make you anything, even if it, if it, if it does 100x. Uh, but, you know, you put, take take your take your $100 and you can just divvy that up into like, let's say 10 plays, all right? 10 plays. Uh, that way you can just enter the trade. You buy with $10 or 10% of your $100, whatever the X amount that you've taken out of your trading account is. And, and you set your, you know, you set your area that you want it to go to and it either goes there or it doesn't, right? So that money is either going to win or it's going to lose. And that's, it just makes risk management much simpler. You're risking a small portion of your account and you don't have to worry about take pro this. Blah, 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 blah. So like leave that to the centralized exchanges and GMX trading, all right? Where you're actually like trading with leverage and doing all these things. We're not trading with leverage here. So we're just going to take a percent of equity. Uh, so for those of you who have the premium trading journal, use the percent of equity setting and just put something in it that you can afford to lose, all right? If you choose to trade it at all, you don't have to. All right, again, I make no money whether you trade it or not. I just bring you guys what comes across my radar, what alpha I am able to uncover, and what I think makes sense, all right? So down here on BB on the 15 minute time frame, we can see, yeah, so multiple attempts to push above this current level of resistance. We did just do this. I'd like to see, again, I wanna see this nice little pullback and I'd like for us to come back. We've got this very nice, we got this very nice uptrend here. And you guys know that I'm not a huge fan of diagonal trend lines, but when they're respected so well, I do like them. All right. So I'd like to see price come down here closer to $2, $2.25. And then I'll be looking to add a position on BB uh, with, with probably less than 1% of my account. I went in for 1% on guys. I'm probably going to do a half or a quarter percent on BB uh, since it's, it's, since it's so kind of overextended. Now I wanted to get back into guys just a little bit. Uh, a little bit more information on guys. I apologize. I did have some more stuff here. Okay. Uh, there are 10 million tokens. So like I said, it's not inflationary. There's a 5% tax on both buy and sell transactions. Uh, the tax is for development, security enhancements, user experience improvements, and strategic marketing. Uh, stakers receive a share of the transaction fees from the platform, which is redistributed based on their stake token proportion in Ethereum. Uh, and if you hold the token, you can also participate in governance through Geyser DAO. Uh, you will also, according to the, according to their white paper, you will be able to access exclusive benefits by holding the token, including passive income opportunities. I'm not sure. Uh, and the token is positioned as more than just a crypto, but as a movement. All right. So uh, I don't know about all that, but uh, so the way staking works specifically, staking starts every Saturday. We can go to stake here. And actually, uh, we'll just go here. 
So, like I said, I, ha I, I have some guys. I have it in my wallet. And I'll go ahead and connect my wallet here. And so, yeah. So, there is quite a bit staked. And so, I can stake. I will, I will do this uh, after the show. But I, I can approve and stake my guys here, which... Uh, seems to kind of make be a no-brainer uh, because if I end up, I do end up holding it for a week, at least I'll get a, a little bit of ETH reward. So staking starts every Saturday at midnight UTC, and it ends on Sunday at the same time. So from Saturday midnight to Sunday midnight the next week. All right, your tokens must be staked until the following Saturday to claim rewards. Okay, so you have to stake your tokens by Saturday at midnight. And you have to leave them in there until the following Saturday at midnight. So you have to stake for seven whole days. Uh, and you do have to pay attention to that time window. You, the tokens have to be staked by Saturday at midnight and they have to be unstaked. So actually, in my case, um, we'll see. The more tokens you stake, the higher the reward, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can unstake at any time without fees. But if you unstake before Saturday, uh, it, you do forfeit your reward eligibility. So actually, I actually think that I can stake right now and earn rewards on Saturday. I don't think I, don't think I have to have them in by, by Saturday. I just have to have them staked uh, from sometime until Saturday. They have to be staked on, they have to still be staked by Saturday at midnight, UTC. Um, rewards derived from platform and trading fees are claimable as Ethereum after Sunday, midnight, UTC. And if you unstake before the end of the, yeah, as I said, if you unstake before the end of the staking cycle, it will disqualify you from rewards. Now, obviously, what's the potential here? The potential is for the token price to go up because it's a little hot right now. Uh, the reward's probably not for the guys, but I do like that it's paid on Ethereum. I love that it's not an inflationary token. So uh, let me know what you guys think, obviously, in the chat and in the comments. That's pretty much all I've got for today's market update, guys. We're going to go back to Bitcoin now and nerd out on the 15 minute time frame there is a cricket in my office and it's driving me crazy all right nice come on volatility volatility and we're going to go to the chat and this is your opportunity ladies and gentlemen if you have questions comments things you would like me to discuss things you would like me to talk about uh, if you have chart requests, now is the time. We've got 10 minutes left in the show, and then it will be gone. All right. Uh, let's actually, before, go ahead and get them in, guys. And then I am going to go ahead and read through the chat so far. Uh, big shout outs. Alexander Pearson, senior analyst. What's going on, my brother? Alex81SG, of course. Magnus Soderberg. Good to see you, my brother. B Flow. Tyler uh, yeah, I usually pronounce your name right. Dukacek. Don't I always say Dukacek? I don't think that's right. Let me know if I'm, I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Let me know if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I'm sorry, man. We got Blackbird in the house. Master Trader over on Bybit. I did miss the opportunity to say, let's get cracking. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I apologize. Uh, Alex saying that breakout trading loses more often than it wins. It's a trend-following strategy. They just tend to be big winners. Yes, absolutely. Alex pointing out that Cardano's on-chain total value locked has been increasing pretty steadily. Yes. And you're absolutely right. The problem with the Uniswap token is it does nothing. You don't get any revenue. There's there's absolutely no, no, no reason. And Alex 81SG, there's about a billion dollars. We were talking about this earlier in the premium chat. There's about a billion dollars of liquidatable wow that's a heck of a word man liquidatable on venus exchange if bnb goes below 180. uh tyler says that the hearst exponent can help identify which volatility expansions are scams and which potentially have legs and then yeah yeah throwing out that bali bali poor uh hearst exponent magnus is uh hoping that solana goes up he's down 60 percent on my pitch position where i bought soul Okay, and yeah, so specifically, Tyler is saying that you check the Hearst exponent when BBWP expands as a confirmation indicator for volatility-based systems. So that's, that's a fascinating concept. Maybe we'll talk about this a little bit more uh, in more detail. 
Magnus says, so many in crypto are hiding their gains. They will one day feel immense pain. I've always paid mine, so I'm all good. If the Swedish IRS hates me to 60 to 90,000 transactions in a year. Now we're talking, yeah. I did not miss that BitBoy is fired from his own company. I just couldn't care less about BitBoy Crypto. Uh, I did actually reach out. So I did see the Twitter thread though. And I saw that in the thread where everybody was talking about this on Twitter, um, one of his former chat mods had posted like, hey, I used to be his chat moderator. I know so much dirt, blah, blah, blah. And I reached out to him and asked him if he would speak to me and come on the show. I haven't heard back from him yet, but if he does, you guys will be getting a perhaps sneak peek into BitBoy, Bitboy Crypto's corruption. Uh, Bird says that the NFT bear market is coming to an end if there's huge FUD like this. Like always in any other market. Uh, Alex brings up a good point. Yeah, I mean, you have that's that's you have a good point, right? But is this really FUD, Alex says? This is actually bad news, right? Uh, Alex, we're talking about guys here. He wants to point out that uh, what we need to know about this contract is that it has a limit to what percentage of the token any single wallet address can hold. But that, of course, doesn't prevent someone from owning 50 wallets with 1% of the token's place. So, so we don't actually know if a whale owns the whole supply. Interesting. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, 20, yeah, exactly. I had to set slippage to like 6 to 8% and I paid like a $26 gas fee uh, to snatch up like $1,000 worth of, worth of this guy's token. So yeah, man, I feel you, dude. Uh, Magnus asks, what do I think about LCX? One of the first fully regulated exchanges was said it might be another 100X token and might be the exchange we do our private sale on later. Okay, LCX. L, 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 L. What am I looking Come on, man. What's going on here? Uh, here we go. All right. LCX. Um, let's see here. I mean, LCX doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, it's, it looks the same as many, 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 many different cryptos, right? Obviously, ginormous 2021 pump. Weaker pump, obviously. Uh, huge pullback, or complete pullback, basically right back down to our previous level of support here. Uh, we, of course, had this big deviation, big deviation, very minor deviation here, at double bottom. I mean, we've got a bit of work to do, uh, but I would say that LCX is at support. I I'm not necessarily bullish on exchange tokens. I don't know a lot of people who are. But uh, just looking at the chart, I mean, this doesn't look bad to me. I mean, obviously, you know, we retrace the entire way. This is probably the time to be a buyer on LCX if you if we've got some fundamentals or we believe that they're they're going to do well in the future. And I think altcoins and DeFi are going to do well this week. Uh, so based on that, just like any other coin, it's probably not bad. And the fact that it's at support and you know pushing up here a little bit. Uh, let's see where would we, where would I want to take some profits in the short term? Probably like fifty five cents. 55 cents and of course maybe like 70 cents 69 cents somewhere up here uh just you know catching these these lower areas of support that's where i'd want to be taking profits in case it turned into resistance uh other than that um you know of course you know big big market capitalization you know not a lot but you know sufficient liquidity 463,000 on uniswap uh it doesn't look too bad yeah it does not look too bad And can I find any more information here? No, but what about um All right, price of LCX here, of course. And let's, what what can we see here? Here we go. Uh, exchange in 
inflow, exchange outflow, and we want to see supply held by top addresses. Active addresses and yeah, sorry, daily active addresses and transaction volume and transaction volume in USD. All right, this is gonna be a lot to look at, um, but we'll try to do this one at a time. All right. Uh, Let's expand this. So, of course, we are looking at Santimate here. Uh, beautiful tool. Uh, so, price. Again, as we already talked about price. Social volume. Um, a pretty consistent. Uh, this is just using... Uh, this is Social Volume AI, which is a tool that just, you know, uses a ChatGPT NLP plugin um, to kind of analyze how much conversation about uh, LCX is occurring on social media platforms. Um, nothing really significant here. I do see consistency. Uh, I don't see a, a big rise. And, and in fact, lower than average, honestly. Uh, daily trading volume is actually decreasing. I actually don't see it picking up. Of course, if we go back and look at price, we can see that there are some big spikes, but those are on the pumps. And you can see here, right here in this area of price, uh, that there was actually quite a bit big explosion of volume uh, on that dip. So somebody did swoop up that dip. Um, exchange inflows, we did just get a big spike of exchange inflows recently, about a week ago. And, and price really hasn't fallen, so that's not too bad. And we had some big exchange outflows, of course, on that big dip as well. Um, the percent of supply held by top addresses has actually decreased since June. So we actually don't see the top addresses accumulating more LCX. We actually see them distributing. Um, active addresses are also on the decline as well. Daily active addresses are also on the decline, unfortunately. So there's not a lot of increased network activity here. Transaction volume is also on the decline. So, and then transaction volume USD is also on the decline. So actually the on-chain evidence here is actually pretty negative. Um, of course, we just had a big dip and we saw some big buyers step in. So it's okay to see negative on-chain technicals right here. That's completely fine. Um, but, but it is suggesting that, that we haven't seen any influx of fresh capital to kind of begin the pump. All right. So I would wait for some of this to turn around. All right, guys. Well, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to come visit the cryptocurrency markets with me and crack some cryptocurrency. Uh, if you want, there are many ways to get involved with the community. I highly recommend and request that you guys come join our community, come join our Discord. I think it is one of the best places for traders, whatever level of experience, to improve their skills and connect with other people and find good information, alpha, and stop wasting their time on all these random telegram signal channels discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com link is down in the description go grab your free copy of the five mistakes holding you back from profitable trading link down in the description you can copy trade me on fairdesk if you have any questions comments concerns sarcastic remarks or death threats please leave them in the comment section down below as well as suggestions as what you'd like to see in the next live stream quick update uh, for the premium members, we will be doing our weekly mentoring slash ask us anything session tomorrow, tomorrow at 2 p.m. MST uh, instead of on Wednesday. The reason why is I'm going to be traveling on Wednesday and I want to make sure that I give a good dedicated session and get that high quality recording while I'm in the studio. Uh, I will be live streaming tomorrow. Tomorrow will be my last live stream for the week. So we will not be live streaming on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, potentially, we will be live streaming maybe on Monday, Tuesday. Uh, but that is the whole period in which I'm going to be traveling. And I do like to put out high quality content. So I will be extremely active in the Discord, though. I will be, of course, copy trading. And I have uh, currently two videos scheduled to come out while I will be traveling. So we'll have 
a pre-recorded video coming out on Thursday that is going to be all about how to trade indicator-based trading strategies uh, and how to step those down. So if you have a trading strategy on like the hourly or the daily, I walk individuals through how to take that down to the 15-minute time frame, how to adjust your indicators, and also how to use multiple time frames to spot confluence and find higher probability profitable trade setups. The second video is going to be five reasons why you suck at cryptocurrency trading as requested by the community. So look forward to those videos. I think one will be coming out on Thursday and one will be coming out on Saturday or Sunday, probably Sunday. So thank you guys for all your support. Join the community and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.